Mm -hmm. Call uh, Jonathan Young. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, last Monday evening, I went to an event in New Plymouth where uh, there were 250 people present. It was a presentation by a company who uh, ran a Dragon's Den type of uh, event where, as they presented different uh, aspects to what their company was about, um, people were invited to say in or out. And uh, so they started off by warming up the crowd and saying, this is how it works. And uh, the, the presenter said, uh, the New Zealand flag referendum. Who is in for a new flag? And up went the signs. And, sir, the person at the front said to the crowd, they are more in than out, because on the other side was out. And I estimated out of, out of that 250 that around about 60% of the people just across the broad, people from New Plymouth, all sorts of ages, backgrounds, ways of life, 60% said they're in for a flag change. So, sir, I think the mood is there in the country that we want to see, we want to see, we want to see all the, all the potential and possibilities of what a flag referendum offers us. Sir, I just want to put the record straight on a couple of matters because I have heard members of the opposition say that this process has been, has been flawed from the very beginning. I, sir, I chaired, I chaired the cross-party committee. Let me, let me just read out a couple of points, because by the end of November, we took three recommendations to the Minister in charge of the process, the use of preferential voting for the first referendum, four alternative flags instead of three. We wanted to bring the timing of the second referendum forward into March rather than April, and I reported back to that committee that the Minister had taken these recommendations to the Cabinet and they and each had been agreed to. Sir, the, the Minister and the Cabinet listened to our recommendations. And, sir, they, they were not obligated to agree with us, but, sir, they considered, and where we presented some very good rationale, they agreed and changed the process. So, sir, for people to say the process was flawed from the very beginning is actually inaccurate and incorrect. In our final meeting, in our final meeting out of four, in the last five minutes before it was due to end, a discussion was proposed to change the structure of the referendum to a yes-no vote. Sir, out of four meetings that each went for over an hour, in the last few minutes of this process, this discussion took place. And it is true, I was the single voice that opposed that proposal that opposed that uh, suggestion. And as chair of the cross-party group, I said I would convey the views of the majority of members regarding that yes-no vote, but reminded them that the government was not obligated to enact their views, and they didn't, and I agreed with that. Not because I represented National, but because I understood the process, the rationale, the reason why we had put that into place. Sir, so, and I refer again to Gareth Hughes' uh, opening speech yesterday where he said his first choice was uh, Laser Kiwi and, sir, he has changed his view. And I think what that demonstrates, as people engage in the process, as people engage in the process, their views change. And that's all right. And so the yes-no vote sort of cuts off things at the pass, in my view. And as uh, Jackie Dean said, we do have a yes-no vote, but it's in the second referendum, not the first. And I believe, sir, that our process that we've put in place is good and it will work. And what it will do, it will engage New Zealanders into looking at alternatives before they come to the yes-no vote in the second referendum. And, sir, I think that is an appropriate way. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for New Zealand to look at these things. Sir, I believe it is. And I believe, sir, that once we decide whether it's the present flag or a new alternate flag, that we as a country will settle on that and move forward. Sir, I believe that um, it's important that we have a choice between alternatives. And I'm not, I, I don't agree 
I don't agree with Mr Mallard, who says yes, no vote in the first re re referendum and choose your alternative out of five compared to the... Because that's not really a choice. People want to know they're choosing between the present, between the present flag and what else. Not, not one out of five, but they want to know something definite. Choosing a flag is that important, sir. And I believe that we have got it the right way around. You know, sir, to me, as I just come to a close, my choice will have a silver fern on it. I want the Southern Cross on it. I want the Southern Cross. I'm not sure whether I want red and blue or black and blue. I'm yet to think about that, sir. The reason I want the Southern Cross as an as, as important component of our flag is because, sir, we are an immigrant nation. We are all navigators. We got here, or our forebears got here, uh, being led by, navigated by the stars. We are a nation of nations. And I believe that what the Southern Cross does, it puts us all on the same footing, the same ground. Sir, we are all equal in this nation. Sir, I want to have a silver fern on this flag because it is unique to New Zealand. It has emblazoned our national sports uniforms. It has honoured our war graves. It is the single emblem that New Zealanders have identified with for decades. When Olympians stand in victory, sir, I would love to see them wrapped in a fern, like a laurel of victory rather than a Union Jack. No disrespect uh, to Britain, but, sir, something that represents who we are as New Zealanders. And, sir, I'm very pleased in this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to commend this amendment bill to the House. Thank you, sir.